Hi and welcome to this photography channel with Morten Albeck. I am a photographer based in Denmark. I have plus 30-35 years experience with photography and video production. But this will all be about photography, so welcome to the channel. In this very first episode, I would like to invite you into my universe of photography and present the two cameras I use the most. And I can start admitting I am a bit conservative when it comes to cameras. When I found or find something that works, I stick with it for a long time. I do not change cameras that often simply because it is a working tool for me and I want to know it into the bones. I don't want to think about new buttons, new menus, how do I set it in this situation. It should just be in there, going out, aiming and shooting like it was. That's the most important thing about photography, what you are actually doing with your camera, taking pictures. The two cameras I use at a daily basis is the Leica M9. This is an old timer been with me for a long time. It will be changed into the new M10 in a future not too far away. Then I also use the Sony Alpha system, the A7R 2, 3, 4 and soon 5, both for video shooting, which we will not talk a lot about, but we will talk about video shooting in that sense, that I'm also using the Sony Alpha system to take pictures, photographs, including them in the videos, but also for the company I work for, the TV2 Fyn broadcaster, the regional station here, and I have done that for a lot of years. A lot of this will be black and white photographs because I have a real good feeling with black and white and working for a broadcaster. This is a bit of a challenge and not a daily fight, but in between pushing them to use black and white photos. They have that special feeling and I have succeeded getting that into the system in between. But color photos is what editors prefer, both in magazines, for books and with some exceptions and for television uh, web pages as well. But black and white has that special timeless feeling where form and shadows and light is everything and it drags your attention towards the feelings and not so much about the clothes when it is in color. The cameras I use, the Leica M system and the Sony is due to their small size. I can carry these cameras with me without having a load on my shoulders including a camera or equipment I use for shooting video for the TV company TV2 film. Therefore I use small cameras but I also use them because I am doing a lot of street photography and small cameras with low weight. This is actually a little bit heavy. The Leica M9 is so well built and the lens has some weight as well. But the small cameras make you more invisible when you are going out on the streets and they are easy to carry around. If you have a big DSLR, Nikon, Canon, whatever, it will probably just stay in your car or in your bag uh, at the hotel room or wherever you are. You will not bring it around. At least that's my experience from the old days where I carried those heavy DSLRs. I never get them out uh, as I wanted and I missed a lot of shots. So when I changed to the rangefinder or EVF system, it changed my life into photography because I will bring my camera ever, everywhere and capture moments of life, which is the big interest and what we will talk a lot about on this YouTube channel. First of all, let me explain the difference between the Leica M and the Sony Alpha. The Sony First, this is an EVF electronic viewfinder system. So you are looking into a small, you could say, television screen inside the camera and you have to get adjusted to that. As you have to get adjusted to the rangefinder system, the Leica M, uh, where you just look through a clean window, 
with a little frame that tells you where your framing of the lens is. This is different, but I prefer this system for street photography, especially because you always have that clean image in your window. You don't have to rely on a screen inside here that might change according to light that may be a little bit more difficult to focus with. My experience with those two cameras is this is my preferred image maker because it produces so lovely files and colors. Uh, the sensor in here in the Leica M9 and also the Leica M10 produces that Kodachrome feeling from the old days. And if you are as old as me, I just turned 60 this uh, past summer, then you know if you have been shooting for a long time, those Kodachrome colors are really special. They are rich, they are deep, and they have a special sense that Leica was able to produce with the sensor in the very first time in the Leica M9. Unfortunately, that original sensor has some issues with corrosion and have to be changed uh, in many cases, and that is not possible anymore. But you might find an old M9 out there with a replaced sensor or a sensor without any failures. Also, just be aware that the memory cards you put in there cannot be the very modern or very fast. You have to use the older types that are a bit slower, but they will work with this camera. For the Sony, it is different. They work fast and precisely, and with uh, modern uh, SD cards, they will uh, produce nice pictures that are not like the like an M9, but the colors at the Sony system is what I prefer most of the time for my pictures. There's a difference in color for every sensor. Every time a camera is updated in a new model and the sensor is a different one, then there will be a new color setting in there that you have to adapt to your post-production in Lightroom or Photoshop, whatever you use, Capture One. So you have to adjust those colors. I'm still clinging to this uh, Sony M2, not M2, this is M9 and this is A7R2. I still cling to this one because it is working well. I I'm got used to it. The thing with the Sony cameras is that the menus in here are pretty clumsy. They are, yeah, Sony is the worst about menus. I think they have improved with the new models of the R4 and 5, but still a lot of unuseful uh, menu settings in there, but you can adapt that to your personal menu so you make kind of shortcuts so you have the favorite settings. But there are so many settings and they are not logical. The thing with the Leica M9 and <coughs> 10 and upwards is that the menus are really simple. You just have what you need and this is everything for me in photography. I only want the buttons I need to push and not a lot more to distract me from taking photos. So I need something for aperture, I need something for shutter speed, and then I need to focus. With the M9, focus is manual. There are no automatic focus system in here. You have to, like at the old cameras, and it still is so, there are electronic viewfinders for the new <coughs> M10 and, and 11, if you prefer, but else it is that you have two dots and when you focus those lines, it could be my eyes, then those two fields have to stand above each other and at line, and then you know it's in focus, and you can see that in the viewfinder screen. With the EVF system, it's a little bit different. Then you have some indicators of focus. It can be red or green, and small uh, lines in there that indicates where the focus area is. And if you, like I do, shoot wide open at 1.4 with really shallow depths of field. This is uh, only 2.8, that is a little wider uh, depth of field. Then you have to nail your focus. I use manual focus. I am raised with that because I'm born into the world of television and lenses like these old Winches lenses from an old 35 millimeter camera. This is a Tamron is only manual. You cannot adjust anything automatically here. So I'm adjusted to that and I will 
recommend that you practice doing everything manual from exposure to focus simply because if you train your eye and your mind doing that then you will nail it more precisely in most cases than with automatic focus system because the automatic focus system here when I point it towards a target it might focus on the man in front of me or woman and not the interesting subject just behind there with manual focus I can change that and control everything myself and with training you will be as fast as the system here built in to attract that focus exactly where you want it. For video shooting it's different, there you can use an automatic focus system in the Sony, it is excellent, it is really precise but again it chooses the subject, you can go into deep settings and change that so it follows a specific person but again all of this takes focus from your attention to the subject you want to shoot and that's why I cling to manual settings so I have full control of everything. Another thing about manual settings is when you set your exposure there's an indicator in the camera that tells you it tries to guess where about the exposure should be but if you like the picture at the wall behind me shoot up against something bright the camera might try to expose drag the exposure down to get the light right and then the main subject in the picture will disappear will be dark maybe in silhouette and then the picture is ruined you will not get what you want so manual settings is good when you have set your light i often exposure on my hand or on a subject i take one picture look at it at the screen then i dial up or down for the shutter speed here because I want my lens wide open so that's fixed so I dial with the shutter speed up and down take another picture test if it looks good so I have two files in here just to put in the waste bin but I have now fixed my exposure and can begin shooting in the environment I'm in if I then change position go to another place and light is different I just do the same again but it is far better than having the aperture set on automatic and let the camera decide for you because it is just guessing. Of course nowadays they are really clever and can guess pretty precise in many cases but where you want to make those extraordinary pictures that stands out from the crowd and is not just evenly lit then I will absolutely recommend you to go on manual and have full control. The small camera size is really good because of the low weight and you can have it over your shoulder. Carry it around a full day without your sh shoulder <laughs> being in pain and you will be able to shoot and produce the pictures you want. So that's why I use the small cameras, especially <coughs> on video shooting where I'm also taking stills for the company for TV2 film besides the filming, the video shooting then having a big clumsy camera over my neck would it would never happen and I try to avoid to use the iPhone because uh, it can be used and I teach photographing students at work using the iPhones to produce better pictures and it is possible to adjust these two and of course the camera you have with you is the most important thing it's much better than not having a camera but a good camera will absolutely produce better pictures than an iPhone in every situation. I also have with me most of the time a small notebook where I write up subjects of interest I want to focus on. So when you are around shooting it is a good idea to have an idea what you are looking for because having a focus is really important in photography. So when I go on the street it's not necessarily that I'm in the mood to take a photograph but I bring my camera and I have in the back of my head what I'm actually is looking for at that particular day. Sometimes I'm not but sometimes I am focused on people or I'm looking for a specific color I want to drag into my photo if I'm shooting in color. And this, this leads me to the black and white images that I love to produce because they have that classic feeling, they are not annoyed by colors and clothes and the picture again behind me is in color 
and that's for a reason. It works well in black and white, but works much better in color because the dress is what makes the skull stand out from the crown and making the men uh, uh, behind her looking a little annoying at the dogs. But the clothes is everything in that picture. If it should be black and white, the colors will disappear and you will not have that focus on the clothes. And the clothing is the main object of the picture and the full situation, of course. So everything is about looking at the picture. Does it work in black and white? Does it work in color? Often I go for the black and white. The thing with the Leica M9 here is that it should beautiful black and white in JPEG, but everything, and I recommend you doing that, it gives you a lot of bigger files, but you can clean up in that afterwards. It can shoot both, both raw, where you get all the information in the picture you need, both from blown out, out highlights, but especially from the lower areas, from the dark areas, you can push it up and you can drag something down. With a JPEG, you have to nail it more precisely. There's not that much information to correct afterwards, so you might miss a picture if you do not have the perfect exposure. But the Leica M9 here produces very good RAW files, but also excellent JPEG black and white files aside of the RAW. So you can shoot with a double exposure, so to speak, so you get a RAW file that will always be in color. You can change that to black and white afterwards. But the JPEG files actually produce a very pleasing gray tone scale. I often push down or drop down the black and shadow areas some because I like the more, more contrasty uh, pictures. And this also depends on the light situation where they are shot in. But this is a really good feature in the Leica M9 that it can shoot both a RAW and a JPEG in black and white, so you can set that up. But else use the RAW files because then you can change it into black and white in your post-production program if it is Lightroom Capture One or just Photoshop. With the Sony, it is a little bit different in color. Uh, the Leica M produces those nice, a little bit vintage Kodachrome colors. Uh, with the Sony here, we have a different color. This is the A7R to produce some magenta skin tones in between that not, doesn't look very good. So you have to correct that afterwards. That can be done when you import the pictures or afterwards make a preset where you drag out a little of that magenta that I think is annoying. This have been corrected in later cameras, so therefore I use this mainly to shoot black and white when I'm using the Sony. With the Leica M, they produce a little bit, uh, maybe two green greens uh, and maybe a little bit two orange for skin colors. But again, this can be correct afterwards and it looks like the Kodachrome feeling. The same with the Leica M10, they have reproduced the same beautiful uh, look of, of film look like you can say from the sensor. And I know that the M11, the newest uh, cameras are producing a more flat picture. Uh, they have also used uh, products from Sony and other companies and Panasonic earlier. But here, I think that the, the Sony produces a much nicer color today than in this a little bit old camera. But I stick to this still because I'm pretty conservative. I want to know my buttons and know to want my camera. So I'm not the first one you will experience go out and buy a new camera as soon as it arrives on the market because then I have to adjust all my settings, all my workflow. And for the same reason, I keep away from trying any other camera. I have tried a lot of cameras during my career uh, and I actually started uh, shooting the first pictures when I was around 19 years old. I bought my first camera I am actually self-taught as photographer, but have been working professionally for plus 30 years. Uh, I'm actually uh, educated as a gardener, so that's a quite different story. But for the first, I was paid during my training. And from my first salary, I went out and bought a Olympus M2 with film, of course, in those days. And started shooting. My mother has been shooting uh, for a long time before me 
with a small Olympus, so it just went out for the Olympus uh, for the first thing and started shooting for some reason. I just had an idea. I would like to take some pictures, so the first salary was all put in that camera and very little for food that month. Since then, I have been taking pictures and trained myself into making good photographs and, of course, making my living from photographing, taking photographs and video shooting for national and regional broadcasters all those years. Photographing is something you do not often uh, expect to, to happen on a news station for television broadcasting, but I have pushed it in slowly during the years and today it's a really important part of also news gathering and video production that you have good photographs to put on as thumbnails to write articles and everything around the production needs a really good picture and taking them as a screenshot from a video will never be the same it doesn't have the depth it doesn't have the feeling and what is more important there's a really big difference on shooting something where you have to follow the subject and make pictures in between as uh, transferring scenes and then to nail a photo in a glimpse of a second and have the full situation there so your mindset is different and the aim with the camera is very different. When I shoot street photos, I have a habit of just walking around, observing people, and I know uh, my wife is now used to it when we take a walk somewhere and I have my camera on my shoulder and she's talking to me, suddenly she will experience that I disappear running to the other side of the street because I saw something of interest I want I don't want to miss that shot, so I disappear, take my photos and come back and we continue conversation. Maybe it is annoying, but I think you are used to it now. So when we look at the two cameras here, they are both full frame, which is important when you want a shallow depth of field. Uh, the full frame sensor in uh, the Leica M is one of the first in the world in such a small compact camera. Other companies like Sony came afterwards and also produces really good lenses. I favor the Leica M, I have to say, because the lenses are brilliant. They are, of course, more expensive, but the quality is excellent. They are sharp from the middle to the edges. If you want the same quality in a Sony lens, the lens will be much bigger. This is actually a consumer lens, a pretty cheap Sony lens. They're sitting on this one right now for this. But the better lens is the 35mm 1.4. It's an excellent lens, but it is much bigger and more clumsy to walk around with than at the Leica. So you have to consider when you choose your cameras, what kind of ph photography are you going for? Is it landscape? Then use a bigger camera. It can be a Hasselblad, it can be a Sony, it can be whatever camera you prefer, and the size is not that important. But if you're going into the street, shooting people, a small camera, easy to carry, is really important for enjoying your photograph experience, but also to be more uh, discreet when you're walking the streets, so you do not have a really big camera with a huge lens, because people will notice that much more than if you have a small camera. The Leica M has a bit of a film feeling, you can say, the Leica M9 especially, because the ISO setting is uh, above 800, it begins to be pretty noisy. So this is the limit, like if you in the old days put film in the camera, then you have the sensitivity of light into the camera that reaches up to 800 ISO and that's it, and then it begins to become grainy if your exposure needs something more than that. But my experience is that I'm never shooting anything about 800 ISO, so I don't need those really high ISO settings that are in modern cameras. Even when I'm shooting in night, when I have a fast lens going down to one, a stop that says 1.4, I get enough light, I can shoot it at a shutter speed at 50 or even 40 if I 
have the right position and can stand still and maybe set continuous mode so I take two or three pictures in a row. Then the first one often will be a little shaky when you press the button, but when you hold it down and it takes the next pictures, you will get a sharp picture. Else you can turn to the Sony where you can, you can push the ISO settings higher if you need it, but I rarely need that at all, so I'm not aiming for high ISO settings at all. With both of these cameras, there is a base ISO setting that is ideal, and it can be a little bit difficult sometimes to get it out of the companies what ISO settings is actually ideal. Sony won't sell it for some reason. I think uh, Leica is also a bit reluctant to say what is the base ISO and what is the base ISO. The base ISO is the ISO setting, I say ISO, ISO, <laughs> the ISO setting where the camera produces the best files with, uh, with as little noise as possible and the best color rendering. Because as soon as you push the ISO up, then you also change something in the colors, especially at the M9, it begins to produce odd colors as soon as you go, go above, above uh, ISO settings 800. With the Sony cameras, you can push it far beyond that and it will still produce nice colors. Of course, also some grain when it gets really high on both cameras, but the base ISO settings for both cameras is between 100 and 200. I go for 100 most of the time. I think I can't see any change if I go to 200 at all, even if I uh, go in and zoom in on the pictures and examine the colors. And I rarely do that because what is uh, that about? It is just about uh, pixel picking and you don't get anything from that. Look at your picture. Does it look nice? Does, do the colors present themselves naturally as they should? Or do they not? If they are off, then you have to correct or use another setting. So in no of these videos I will produce, I will go in pixel bending and go in detail uh, with small grains and stuff like that, because we need to look at the full picture, how it presents itself, how good does it look, and that's it. So I'm not picking on zooming in on every detail and uh, determine if a color is precisely as it should be. The difference in colors here, of course, reflects on what you're doing. I go for as natural colors as I possibly can, so I try not to change a lot afterwards. I know there is a tendency, probably uh, arise from Instagram especially, to put any kind of filters on. For what reason? Do you want to spoil your picture or do you want to have a natural pleasing picture. If you go for the M9 system, it will be a shame to put all those filters and presets on and ruin a beautiful picture from the M9 or M10. If you have a different camera like the Sony here, well, if you like to ruin the picture, go ahead. But I think there is a tendency in, in photography that people are changing everything to look like some odd Instagram look. Why do that if you have a really good camera with a nice lens and some beautiful pictures produced from that really good quality sensor? Else you can as well shoot with your iPhone or a, any kind of uh, product and then change all the colors to what you like. But I rarely do that. I prefer the natural colors and gray tones when it's black and white produced by the camera. So my aim with cameras is always going for that. The reason I also have these two cameras and not just talk about the Leica M and the Sony um, the Solo here is that the really great thing with those two cameras is that you can take your really good Leica lenses and adapt them to the Sony camera. So how do we do that? We have an adapter to do the job and this is a product from Voigtlander or Voigtlander, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, but I looked at it just before shooting here and found that it also says, where do we have it, Cosina in here. So it's a Voigtlander product made by Cosina, uh, or how should we understand it? It's a little bit like cameras. Everything in a Leica is not made by Leica. Everything in a Sony is probably not made by Sony. Different components are put together to build the camera. 
nowadays Sony and uh, are built many of the things themselves, but the lens hood and stuff like that is probably not their own product. In the Leica camera, they are adding a different uh, sensor, and today they will not will not tell us what kind of sensor it is in the 10 or M11. Uh, that's a secret for some reason. Doesn't matter if the camera is good, it's good. This thing will make me able to take my lens from my Leica M and I put the camera downward so it do not get dust inside here when it's off. And the same thing here. Take the lens off. Then I add this little adapter that fits, if I can nail it, there with the camera. And this makes it possible to add the lens. And now I can shoot with the Leica Sumilux 50mm 1.4 lens here and produce wonderful pictures with that lens on my Sony camera. So let's make it easy to adapt those two systems with each other. Let's just put it back to original. So everything is in order, but this is a really cool feature and it will change the 50 millimeter to be a little bit more, not a tele lens at all, but it will change the distance just a bit. It also is a lens or an adapter where you can focus more narrow than you can with the, with the lens at the original camera. But with this adapter, I can change the focus to narrow. So I both have to turn the focus wheel, so to speak, on the lens and again at this adapter and then I can make some really nice close-ups if that should be a subject for photographing flowers, nature, whatever it is. But for daily use, for portraits, for street, it is not necessary to use this one, only to adapt it to another camera. So all of the Leica lenses can be adapted to the Sony as well. A little note about this is also that it might uh, produce a little vignetting at the corners of the picture when it is adapted to the Sony here and the lens is sitting a little further apart from the sensor so it might get a little vignetting at the edges but that can be corrected afterwards as well. As mentioned I'm focusing on having fast lenses they are more expensive, but they are worthwhile if you want that narrow depth of field. And uh, the Sumilux lens here on the Leica M9 produces a wonderful bouquet. The same it will do on the Sony, because the lens is the lens. And this is the most important thing in photography. It is the lens, because this is transporting the light through to the sensor and producing the beautiful image. So. A combination of this and a really good sensor will produce the colors you like. The bouquet is what we say is the on-sharp part of the thing. It is beyond the focus area. So if you're focusing on my eyes, everything behind me will be blurred a little out. And that is the bouquet. And how the lens renders this makes the picture more or less pleasing. So the cameras are used to shoot all sorts of pictures for for books like this one. It was a documentary about prime, mis pr prime ministers in Denmark, both the present and the former. And that's also why I introduced the Sony camera here, because I was starting shooting with the Leica M9. I put up some pictures on the screen here from this book. I was st started shooting with the M9, but I also had to shoot behind the scenes when cameras were running, when sound was important. So I needed a silent camera and here the Sony a7R2 came in some years ago because it had that setting with a silent shutter so you can't hear anything. There's no noise at all, only me breathing. So I could sit still in the corner, follow the situations, snap my pictures and nobody will hear it or observe it at all. I couldn't do that with the Leica M9 because it had a click sound and it would go into the sound and I would be thrown out immediately, I think. With all these stories about two cameras that I use at a daily basis, 
the Sony A7R2 and the Leica M9. I will just say thank you for watching and go out and take some beautiful photographs. I hope you feel inspired and please subscribe to the channel and get an alert every time I put up a new story about photography. Mm -hmm.